Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and today I am doing a sprout check on my jugs. Also, it's an overcast day. It's rainy today, but not heavy rain. So today is like the perfect day to open up and allow some of the plants that I'm, the spring, the frost hardy plants that I'm planning on transplanting soon into my garden to give them some time to acclimate to the outside. And, and by the way, if this is your first time hearing about winter sowing, this is what I'm talking about. It's growing seedlings outdoors in things like milk jugs instead of indoors under grow lights. And I've done a whole series of video on videos on what it is, so check out that series if you want to know more. But basically, these jugs, the plants in here, once they sprout, they, they don't need to be hardened off. Like if you grow seedlings indoors under grow lights, you basically need to spend a week or two getting them used to the outside air temperatures sun all of that for these plants their only thing you have to really do is get them used to being in the sun get them used to being moved around by the air but they're used to the temperature already so really you don't have to do a whole lot and one of the best days to really uncover a container is a cloudy day because then you don't have to like move it into a shaded area sometimes when i open a container for the first time of a sprouted you know seedlings that are big enough uh, you know, I will move them to a shaded spot in the summer, but in the spring there's plenty of cloudy days to go for so uh, I'll show you what I'm doing here Here we have arugula And you can see that it's got at least one set of true leaves. Those are the leaves that look like the plant will look for the rest of its life um, And so I think it's ready for me to open it up I've already got the tape started, but when it's wet outside It's not that hard to take off Arugula is one of those plants that's frost hardy. It can really handle anything down to like a deep freeze. So it can handle like down to close to 28 degrees. Uh, so it's one of the plants you can transplant in the spring. And oh, look how beautiful she is. Oh, yes. Okay, so before you transplant, you want to make sure they have at least two sets of true leaves. You know, at least one, but two preferably. Okay, so let's find here. Here's an example. This plant, these are the... These little heart-shaped things are the seed leaves. They're the leaves that, are, that have the nutrients the plant needs to feed it when it first sprouts. And then the second set is these guys. Now these look like an arugula leaf, right? They're still baby size. And then we have a third leaf, the second true leaf. And it looks like we even have another one growing here. So these plants look like they're okay to transplant. Now I could transplant them today. Um, arugula is one of those that can handle being transplanted almost immediately but with a lot of plants you can also give them you know two days two to three days and if it's going to be a chilly night or or you know if the plant seems to be a little wilty you can put the lid back on but not seal it back up at night i'm probably going to leave it like this all day i'll come back out and check on it and see how it looks if it looks a little unhappy maybe i'll put the lid back on but not seal it um, but I'm, my goal is to transplant this one, the arugula, to my uh, community garden bed this weekend. All right, now that we've separated out the arugula, and by the way, between my last shot and this one, there was a very heavy rain, and look, it's still doing really well. So uh, it handled the heavy rain, a little bit of bruising here and there, but overall it's good. So I've separated out the jugs that have sprouted from the ones that haven't, primarily for the purposes of this video. And it's really good to see sort of where things are at. And I've grouped them. So these are the ones that ha haven't sprouted yet or that look like something might be emerging, but I'm not quite sure whether it actually is a seedling or just my eyes deceiving me. So we're not gonna look at those except the nice arugula. Over here we have this first group are native plants, native flowers to my area. Most of these actually require some days of, strat of cold stratification. So uh, let's see, what's one example? My showy goldenrod I had marked down as needing 60 days of cold stratification. And, uh, and look at that. Then this area, my kale as well as sort of like my Asian greens, like cabbage is the next row onions is this row here then we have a couple containers of herbs this long row here is all lettuces and then next to uh three from the end the one with the white on the, the clear on the front those are flowers that are not native that that row right there 
the one with all those big tall plastic containers those are all tomatoes uh, and i honestly am surprised i did not expect tomatoes to be sprouting but do you notice a really interesting observation here i grew my tomatoes in both clear containers as well as milk jug containers and will you notice the only ones that have sprouted thus far are in the clear plastic i don't know if that is a sign that the clear plastic heats up faster but i think it's a pretty good indication because literally those are the only tomatoes that have sprouted uh, and then the last one i i have to tell you this was my biggest shock this one with the yellow label peppers for me tend to not sprout until late march early april and it's fine that it sprouted now because this is when Na mother nature has signaled it to but i was just really surprised to see that one having sprouted uh, at all and there's a couple other pepper, pepper containers that are close to sprouting or, or look like they might have some seedlings coming out okay so i was curious about the other tomato plants so these jugs here these two short rows are all tomato plants that have not sprouted Two of them are clear, but they're the smaller two liter soda bottles. And we do have one two liter soda bottle of the tomatoes that have sprouted. So what I'm thinking is these taller containers may, the taller plastic clear containers may create more of a greenhouse effect. And by the way, while I was pulling out the tomatoes, I found a couple other jugs that had seedlings that had sprouted. One thing that also surprised me is the Livingston's Paragon tomato that's supposed to be frost hardy also hasn't sprouted. <laughs> you would think out of all the tomatoes the frost hardy one would have sprouted. There's some green in there but I'm not sure that that's a sprout. Sometimes the perlite in potting mix gets a little bit of a green hue which is just natural in a sort of greenhouse effect type of container. And uh, now let's take a closer look at what some of those seedlings look like. All right, that's it for this video. I'm gonna end on a shot of my happy daffodils. Just such a beautiful thing of spring in my backyard. <laughs>